our war on terror begins with al-Qaeda, but it does not end there. It will not end until every terrorist group of global reach has been found, stopped, and defeated. So in the 1990s, after the Cold War, there was a sense of optimism and there was this idea that peace missions could actually obtain peace and uh, human rights were attainable and the responsibility to protect came up a little bit later as well. Do you feel that um, the 90s and a bit after had a unique sense of optimism that's lost since 9-11? I do completely. I mean, I think that whole... We, I, we felt very much we were moving towards a world based on human security, responsibility to protect, uh, global security ideas, and that was completely blown off course by 9-11 and the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, which were not humanitarian interventions, they were classic geopolitical interventions, and uh, with tragic results. And so, yes, I do think that mood has gone. Has, was it just an interregnum, or between the Cold War and the War on Terror, um, or could we imagine a change in the future? I honestly don't know the answer. What I think is happening is that the war on terror is very different from the Cold War in the sense that it involves killing. The Cold War was a kind of imaginary war. <laughs> and so it was actually rather a good structure. The problem with the war on terror is that it involves long distance killing and conflicts in places like Syria, Somalia, Yemen, Mali. And those you're not going to be able in the long run to insulate Europe and America from that violence. So it's a recipe for a very violent, chaotic world. And it's if we actually go back to the 90s and think about the ideas then and think about how to deal with it, that's the only way we can get out of this violent cycle. So uh, my only hope is that people will start thinking in these ways because they will understand that we can't get back to a phase of peace and prosperity without a change in the way we think about security.